knowledge of the region. We have Bobby Ghosh. He is Time Magazine's deputy international editor and former Baghdad bureau chief. He wrote this week's cover story for Time titled Agents of Outrage. We also have Joel Rubin. He's a former Egypt officer at the State Department. And good day to both of you. Bobby, let's reset. Uh, we're in a new week. We're on a Monday. We're seeing more violence in the region. What's your thought here? We, I guess when we look at the map, it covers some 20 areas and countries in terms of the amount of violence that we've seen over the last week. As we are on a Monday, what do you see it getting worse or do you see it getting better? Well, judging by previous uh, bursts of outrage over, over this kind of thing, my, if I had to guess at this point, I'd say it will slowly peter out. There may be another little spike on Friday after Friday prayers. But more importantly, this incident now goes into the in inventory. The next time, it may be weeks, months, years, the next time there's a big spasm of, of public outrage in the, in the street in the Muslim world, they will refer back to this as one of many offenses against their faith. Just as during these protests, they've been referring back to the cartoons, they've been referring to the, uh, the burning of the Quran by American soldiers. So this now becomes part of the narrative, part of the lore that, that those who engineer near these protests can reach back and, and, and play this card over and over again. All right, so with the perspective of looking back, when we hear them, Bobby, yes. where does it sit in that context of the list of outbursts that you're alluding to here? Well, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, after the, after the cartoons in the Danish newspaper that depicted the prophet, a um, hundred people died in protests around the Muslim world. In this instance, the number of, of people killed is much smaller. The reason it, it's, it's gotten this much resonance mm -hmm. is because four Americans, including an ambassador were killed, but if but in, in, the, in the amount of the total number of casualties, this was a smaller incident. But the thing is that this will now have a life forever. It remains on uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. It will remain on the internet forever. And and, and as I said, uh, people who engineer these, who sort of stoke up this violence, will be able to call upon this from here to infinity. And, and, and a, a, a situation where it worked for them if they were the one that were stoking the, the flames there. That's exactly right. Joel, the U.S. has repeatedly condemned that anti-Muslim video that Bobby is alluding to. It appeared on the Internet and said it has nothing to do with it. But that doesn't seem to make much difference to the protesters from what we've seen so far. Thank you, Richard. Yes, the, the announcements of having nothing to do with it are clearly important, and they will help the governments in these countries, uh, be it Libya, Egypt, Tunisia, and elsewhere, to say to their people, look, this was not the American government, so they can enforce more stability in the streets. These are very precarious situations for these governments. But uh, really, the groups that are active on the street are, in a sense, taking advantage of a political power vacuum in these countries. They're trying to assert that they can uh, influence the public debate. Uh, more extreme religious debate is where they want to take this. So uh, it's going to be a very difficult slot, uh, slog ahead for these governments and these more radical groups. Bobby, put that together for us. As uh, Eamon was telling us, there are, what, 30 groups he was alluding to uh, there in uh, wh where he's at in Benghazi that are basically operating at their own free will. Is this the problem that we will see going forward post, uh, again, Arab Spring, where autocracies were taken down? We now have democracies fledgling as they are, trying to make a difference, trying to come together and build a nation. Well, there were two genies in the bottle that were released after, after the Arab Spring. The, the best instincts of, of Arab society and also the worst. Uh, the best instincts, the moderate, the, the secular forces, the moderate forces, the forces that are now in government will have to find a way to deal with the, with the more radical, the worst instincts of, their, of some of their people. Um, the, the, one of the most, I, I don't think you will see militias everywhere. Libya is a particularly bad case where the, the old infrastructure was so badly damaged by a long, uh, civil war. You might see that take place in Syria, but in Egypt and in other countries, in Yemen and so on, the, the security forces exist. They're not great. Mm -hmm. They exist. They're simply not completely in the control of the new regime, mm -hmm. the new governments. The new governments have not yet exercised complete control over these their police forces, their militaries and so on. And that will take time. Remember, these they were, they were at right. loggerheads only months ago. Right. These same police, these same military were beating up the people who are now right. their prime minister and their, their minister of interior. And they have to to avoid the appearance of being that which they are replacing uh, in terms exactly of right. command and control. Yes. Uh, to you, uh, if, if I can here, Joel, uh, you know, hatred of the United States in some of these countries, uh, just so great, it, it, some might say anything will trigger violence against the United States or U.S. Uh, interests in the area. 
There are, are decades of resentment that have built up over time, be it for American support for the dictatorships from the region or a variety of cultural uh, clashes. But we have to remember that we can't demagogue this or generalize about the people in these countries. There are many good allies to the United States in and across the Arab world. And what the administration is trying to do is to ensure that it strengthens those allies in the days ahead. And that's really the right approach. Joel, Bobby, thank you so much for your time today. We'll continue, of course, to talk about this in the days to come. Up next, with just 50 days to go until the election, is Team Romney relaunching? There's some new details about reports of internal dissent within the Romney camp over his messaging. Plus, Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel takes legal action to end the teacher strike that he calls a strike of choice.